Hey guys, Sugum Mahaz bidding you welcome. I am back from the UK. It was an amazing trip. It has been a wild three weeks, man. I'm sorry that I've not uploaded any videos. I've not filmed any either. Um, I was planning to film like a solid game hunting video when I was over in the UK, but I just it just never came up. Just um, I was spending more time doing other things. I also have a new phone because my phone crapped the bed. Um. I was using the Google Maps to get to my dad's and back, and it just overheated and now it doesn't want to get past the, uh, the boot up screen, so I had to get a new one, that's 300 bucks down the hole, but I got a Samsung, Samsung Galaxy S5, something like that, and I was told the video on it was pretty solid and it looks alright, it looks okay, I'm gonna have to get used to there's a few things I like about the phone, a bit of stuff I don't like, but as long as the camera is good, that's all I care about. Honestly, all I use my camera for is, or my phone for in general, is camera, photos, talking with the missus, and work stuff. And that's about it. I'm not playing games on it, I'm not doing anything fancy, so I don't need a brand new one. Um, we have... Oh god, lots of stuff. I'm, 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 I'm going to have to stand up for this one <laughs> to grab some stuff. But most of this was grabbed in the UK. Um, just a little bit about my UK visit. I'm not going to go super in detail about it. I've told people I need to know how it was like over there. I had a wonderful time. It was an amazing trip. Uh, the girlfriend was super happy the entire time. I met her family, which was nice. Nice people. Uh, uncle. Shout out to Retro Mickey 82 link in the description. Uh, the missus has a YouTube channel as well, but I don't remember the name of it, but... Sorry. But it was just a lovely time. Going from here to the UK, it's like... It's very similar, but very different. Like, the UK is kind of like Australia, but compacted. So it's like... And with different weather. Very different weather. I mean, it's winter here right now, and it's... A sunny, nice 24 degrees Celsius. Over there it was summer. And it was cold. It rained a little bit. It was mostly sunny. People were actually telling me I brought the sun with them. They didn't want to see me leave because they knew the sun would go when I left. But um, it was summer over there and it was like 14 degrees max. So it's like, ooh. A lot of times it was cold. I had to uh, buy jeans while I was over there because I actually don't own any pants other than work pants. I had to buy those. I had a really nice uh, beanie. Wait a minute, where's... I'm wearing the beanie on this video, hold on. So far from spending time with her, this thing was the best thing about the trip. Or well, my best purchase of the trip. Like, all of this stuff, nothing compared to this thing. This thing is so fun. Ooh, I can make it do, like, flappy ears. It's the greatest thing. Um, more about the UK. Just a really nice place, I mean... I was talking with my dad about it when I got back. There's so much history there. And he was like, he's never been overseas, but he does understand. Like, there are churches over there that are older than like the colonization of Australia, which is insane. We went to one place that was called uh, Penkeridge. We spent a couple of hours there before moving on to another place. And there was like um, job shops, a market, a nice pub. Pubs everywhere, man. Pubs are so cool. We got like our cocktails and drinks from a lot of places. This is likes the cocktails a bit too much. Had to uh, carry her home one night. Uh, that's what you do on a holiday, right? That's how you spend it. There we go. Do I look stupid enough? Do I look stupid enough? I'm wearing the beanie this guy's wearing. Come on. Monkey see, monkey do. We went to this small town, Pancreas, and they had a church, and we were trying to find the oldest, um. The oldest. Like grave site there. And there was one that dated back to I think the early 1700s. It was like 1730 something and it was right at the front of the graveyard. Like some of them are so old that like the graves are no longer like the graves have deteriorated. Never mind the people within them, the graves themselves have deteriorated. And some of them are like above ground. You can, you can see through them. I swear to god if I shined a light through one of these graves I would see a fucking skeleton. I'm trying to swear less, sorry guys. But I would see a skeleton, it was incredible. But um, 
It's a really nice country. I know a lot of people don't like it there. It's got like a lot of knife crime in some places, but I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was such a nice place. It was like, I'd love to go back someday. I hope I can. Within the next year, I just need to get the holiday hours back up. I was say um, I lost a lot of weight while I was there as well. Check it. Looking, looking good. Almost got a flat stomach. Which is nice. More energy, more uh, I was eating not super healthy there. I ate a lot of junk food. I tried out all of the, I tried out all of the classic British food. You know, pork pies, uh, blood sausages. My, my grandfather loved blood sausages. I don't know what he was on. I tried out the um, bacon bits. I tried out a dandelion soft drink. Tried uh, tried out a few kinds of different beers. So nice. I'm telling you, like, beers over there are so much better than they are over here. I want to go grab a Corona. So over here, it's all about, like, lagers. We don't have a whole lot of ales. I was trying out a lot of different kinds of ales over there. Well, like, not a whole lot. I tried to stay sober for most of it, but I did try a few different kinds out. A lot of Guinness, which was nice. Over here, we more have, like, um... 4X. Brewed locally. It is good beer, though. I have to put this in a place where I'm not going to drop it. How about in my mouth? Yeah, I could talk about the UK forever and how much fun I had there. I went to a car boot, found one thing. That's alright, we got up early almost every day. It was so fun spending time with the missus. I can't go back. I can't wait to go back again. <laughs> Definitely not, I can't go back again. I can't wait. I did a lot of game hunting. When I originally started off, I didn't think I'd be doing much, but, um... Computer exchange there. I see so many YouTube channels complaining about them. You people are fucking idiots. I'm sorry for the language, but it's a fact. You people have no idea how good you have it over there in the UK with the uh, retro gaming and stuff like this. It's like, look at this. I have never ever seen any of these games for the prices I found them for here. I would never find them ever. That's why I bought them. I was like... I swore again, didn't I? Dope. <laughs> they even have like games that weren't released here, so you know what? Yeah, people take it for people take it for granted. Like they complain about getting games that have like printed labels, and while I was over here, I was kind of thinking, oh, like maybe they make a perfect printed label. No, like the printed labels are so obvious. If you buy a printed label, you're a dope. <laughs> you're a dope, man. Buy a printed label for a game, it's like, it's very obviously a printed label. Label. A lot of them aren't even in like original cases, so it's like, if you buy that kind of stuff, you're an idiot. So now that everyone from the UK has stopped watching this video, <laughs> let's uh, except for Tootie, he likes computer exchange. Let's start showing some video games. First thing, or you know, none of this is going to be in any magical order. I don't remember where, when I got a lot of this stuff, I just remember where. So, actually the first game I would have gotten. I bought this months ago, actually. And I told the uh, missus that I would come over and grab it from her after she bought it from me and I'd give her the money. And I did. I have Space Hulk for PlayStation 3, £6 from Computer Exchange. Not released in Australia in any way. The other way I would get it would be to import it, and for £6 that was a great price, that's about $10 Australian, which is really good. It's, like, it's a kind of board game, but set in the Space Hulk universe, no, it's basically the board game, but as a video game. If I can throw that there, this is getting way too hot to wear. Um, I might keep it on like this until I start to sweat. Oof, it's... Too hot over here for this one, I tell you that. I was wearing this all the time while I was over there. I got this from Michael, which was very nice of him. I didn't... Like, I wasn't going over expecting anyone to give me gifts or anything, but he gave me a nice gift. He gave me... When I visited him, Cluedo. I'm a Philips CDI, and it's a big box. I didn't even know, like... 
video games came in boxes like these, but I guess because it's a card game, it does. Yeah, we have Pluto there for the CDI. Really cool. Game I didn't have at all for the CDI, so it's nice to get. Um, anything behind this? Might have like a booklet or something? Nope. Yeah, to my knowledge, this is complete. He said he found this in like a stack of board games for... Yeah, he has it here. Back in 2011 for three pounds. That's really cool. Or... Maybe that was the 11th month of something, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I've not played Cluedo a whole lot. I used to play the board game as a kid. Never really got the hang of it. Never won a game. Um, you, where can I put this? It'll find a home. Okay, I'm gonna need another drink. You guys better grab yourself a drink as well. This is gonna be a long one. Oh boy. First stack. You guys can be shown at the end. That'll be a nice surprise for anyone who watches to the end. As will you. So I'm showing all of the non-Sony stuff first, just because it's going to be easier. Well, all of the non-PlayStation 2 stuff, because i got so much PlayStation 2 stuff. Let's see that. Alright. I got this while I was away. I ordered it from the Computer Exchange website. It was like $10 shipped to my door from the Computer Exchange website, so... I thought I'd grab it. Disney's Hide and Sneak. I really like, um... Mickey's Magical Mirror on the GameCube, and this looks to be similar to it, but as a, um, kind of stealth game. And I like stealth games, so, ten bucks shipped to my door, why not? I'll put that there. Something to sell while I was over there, well, I bought it to sell. For £2.50, we have Microsoft Office Home and Student 2007. I did spend quite a bit of money while I was over there, but that's okay. I was on holidays. Something to sell, um... I have no idea if this will work on Australian computers, I'll have to look it up. But if it does, it's a $40 bill. I always get like $40 out of those. GameCube stuff. I bought three GameCube games while I was over there, which is a lot for me. Three ones so that I didn't have... I should have bought more while I was over there, but... Like, I was seeing a lot of GameCube stuff, but not stuff that I really wanted. And not stuff that I wanted to pay for. I believe... I believe I bought this on like the second last day because I was looking to um I was looking to get money out of my wallet. I was looking to get UK money out of my wallet because I knew I wasn't going to be able to use it when I get back. Uh, Doshin the Giant. Originally a Nintendo 64 disc drive game. This is a very weird game. You play as God on an island and you have to like do nice things for villagers. It's a very cute looking game. Look at this happy little face there, that's awesome. Happy Doshin the Giant. Um, let's try that on there. I'll pile stuff up as I can find room for it. Yeah, Doshin the Giant for £18. That's like 30 bucks, I think, something like that. Yeah, um, I look forward to trying it out. For £6 we have Resident Evil Zero. Awesome game. I have this on the Wii, so it's good to get a GameCube copy. I'll probably sell my Wii copy, because I don't need both copies. And I'd rather have this on the GameCube, because that is what it was originally released for. I believe this is a GameCube exclusive? Like, this definitely isn't on the PlayStation 2 at least, so... It doesn't say exclusive or only for GameCube on it, but it, I think it is. And for £6, this is like $40 game in Australia. So a lot of these games I'm buying, like... You might think, ooh, that's kind of expensive, but you've got to remember, these are expensive games over in Australia. Like this one, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. And I was going to buy a Bomberman game while I was there too on the GameCube, but it, the disc was scratched off, no manual, so I passed on it. But 12 bucks, or... I would be laughing at 12 bucks. 12 pounds for this. Really good deal. This is a $50 game in Australia. Like, this is a... Great game. I hear great things about the Metroid Prime series. Taking this off. I haven't been able to really get into them. I just fell. Like, I would like to sit down and really try, you know? 
Wii games did not did not buy a massive amount of Wii games, but the Wii games I bought were um I believe to be quality. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm showing the quality stuff before I show the PlayStation Two stuff, which is definitely just quantity. Quantity over quality. We have Mad Dog McCree Gunslinger Pack. This is so cool. This is one that only sells for like twelve dollars in Australian Computer Exchange. It's like it's a matter of finding a copy, and it's like. It's more expensive than £3.50 over here, trust me. And it has Mad Dog McCree, Mad Dog McCree 2, and The Last Bounty Hunter, which I've already finished Mad Dog McCree 1 and 2. Super fun, super challenging. I'll have to sit down and finish The Last Bounty Hunter. These games were so fun. I love these kinds of games. I'm not going to open all the cases. M most of these were complete. Yeah, for £3.50, can't leave that. And like... 90% of these were additions to the collection. Very few were ones I was buying to sell. We have... This was found by the missus actually, which was nice of her. Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World. This is one that's like at least $30 over here, so for £8.50, that's like 15 Australian dollars. Way better price. This is... I've not played this one, but I have played Tales of Symphonia on the PS3, so... I'm pretty sure the PS3 game has this game as well, but it's cool to get it on the Wii. Cool game, I'm sure. Really good game. I've got the sequel to this, so I already know this is a great game. Three pounds. Endless Ocean. You'd be a fool not to buy it. For that price. I saw the second game as well, but I already have that one. This is such a good game. This is, um... Made by the same people who made Lost in Blue, I think? Or was it Lost in Blue? It's a PlayStation 2 game, hold on. I have so many PS2 games, oh my god. If the game is Lost in Blue, then I don't have Lost in Blue. <laughs> but yeah, this is such a good game. It's um, ocean exploration, which is something that really interests me in real life. I love watching documentaries about like uh, scuba diving and stuff. I would love to try myself, maybe sometime this year when I can get... It's not the money together, but the will to go out. Yeah, this is a really good game. Well, the sequel is at least. I hear this one is good too, and this one was... This one wasn't complete, but I was still happy to pay £3 for it. Really good game. I just dig games like that. Games that are like super chill. You just wander around, not really doing a massive amount, but just watching the world go by. They're fun. I love to do that in my real life as well. So why not? For one pound, great deal. Bleach Shattered Blade. This is a fighting game on the Wii, definitely not a massive amount of them. I saw a lot of copies of Tatsunoku vs. Capcom, which I was thinking about picking up, but it was ten pounds, and I was like, eh, I don't really want to spend that, I won't play it much. This is one that I'll put in for 20 minutes, get my money's worth out of it. You know, one pound, two bucks, one dollar eighty, whatever. Get your money's worth out of that. And a game that was not released here, and you cannot sell in this country, but you can own it. Learn your laws, people. I'm not actually wrong about that one. Manhunt 2, it's like pornography over here, you can't legally buy or sell it, but you can own it. Yeah, Manhunt 2. This is a game that was never released in Australia. It's not super expensive to buy over, but it is illegal to buy over, so I didn't want to risk doing that. The way I did it was legal, at least. Buying it in the country that you can buy it in, and bringing it back. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, I played the first Manhunt, it's okay. I'm amazed this game didn't get a PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 version. I think it was only on PS2, PSP, and Wii. PlayStation 3 games, not a tremendous amount of them, but some good ones. So we have Ratchet & Clank Quest for Booty. Which is the only Ratchet and Clank game I still needed. So now I have all of them on the PlayStation 3. This was, um, I think six pounds, so about ten bucks. Good deal. And I would have paid that over here in a heartbeat. And this is cool. This was the only thing I bought in game, which is another, um, retailer in the UK. It's nowhere near as big as Computer Exchange, though. And I can see why, then they don't have the selection of games. I think they're a bit more expensive, but this was a good deal. For £1.99, 
My girlfriend bought a Rocket League shirt in them as well, which was awesome. Looked great in them. We have Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed 2 Game of the Year Edition. For two pounds, why not? Just want to throw in the collection. I do already have both of these, but not in the uh, Game of the Year Edition form. Let's throw that right there. Happy in its home. One that I bought to sell, doesn't sell for a lot, but it cost me like two pounds. Shellshock 2 Blood Trials, not released in Australia. So, though that means I can't legally sell it. Hmm. Who the pooch on that one? That's a double. Maybe I can trade it away. Any Aussie traders want it? Let me know. A few PSP games. This was the only one I found at the car boot. Pretty much the only thing I found at the car boot. I bought some soft toys for the missus, that was it. Uh, Colum, or Kloom. This was £1.50, I thought, why not? It was more fun just to explore the car boot more than anything else. And there was a lovely forest across the street from it. We built like a little shelter in there, explored around. We saw some, um, like bat shelters as well, so cool. Uh, the other PSP games I got, this one was, I believe, only one pound. That was Battlefront 2. This is a really good game. I bought it to trade into the computer exchange here. So I'll put it on the, uh, I'll put it somewhere. I need to sort all of this stuff after I make this video. Uh, one pound fifty for this, one I've never seen. KO Challenges. This is a KO the Kangaroo game, but it's like a, um... Like a mini game compilation of some sort. Still cool to get. Super cheap. And for only 70 pence. Um, Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. I'm not sure if I have this one. I will check later, but for 70 pence, it's not gonna leave it behind. That was in like a random pawnbroker's. This is a cool game. For one pound, gunmetal on the Xbox. Hold on, I need to, um. Yeah, the disc has scratches on these. Some of these had scratches, most of these were in good condition. I think a lot of their stores have disc resurfacing machines, but some of them just don't for some reason. This was only one pound, so cool to get. I dig mech games sometimes. I dig them if they're like arcadey kind of games. If they're like simulations and the mech is moving at like two miles an hour, I don't. But when the mech is moving like a person and you're destroying buildings and stuff, it's definitely worth it. Okay. Man, how do I do this? Let's show these ones first. These are all of the ones I did not find at Computer Exchange. I found these at like uh, game stores or pawnbrokers and stuff. Like uh, Michael let me know about some good game stores and places to check out. So I checked out those places at his suggestion. Delicious. For 99 pence. A game that I had just as a case, I think. World Super Police. I already sat down and played this one. This one is a lot of fun. This was from, um, what do they call them? Cash Generator. Like, they have cash converters over there as well, but they also have Cash Generator, which is in a lot more places. So this was 99 pence. This was a lot of fun to sit down and play. This is one of those games like um, Battle Construction Vehicles where it's a really bad game but it's a really fun game to sit down and actually play. I try and save those. Hold on. Yeah. Yup. Oh, the missus got me this one. It was a birthday gift. I was at a birthday. It was May 10th. Happy birthday to me. I'm 23 years old. Alien vs Predator Extinction. A strategy game set within the Alien vs Predator universe. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Yep, all this stuff is from like op shops and pawnbrokers. They have a lot of op shops there as well, but a lot of them don't have like video game stuff. All of them have DVDs, but very few of them have video game stuff. I'm just trying to balance this stuff on my leg a bit. Here we go. This was 99 pence in a cash generator somewhere. Eternal Quest. The Midas game? Uh, once upon a time I was trying to collect every game released by Midas. Not anymore. 
It's all looks fun. It's a um, dungeon crawler. Like a roguelike where if you die, you go back to the beginning of the world. Lose all your stuff. But it looks cool. Like, I do dig dungeon crawlers, so this should be a lot of fun to sit down and try out. And for 99 pence, you can't go wrong. For 20 pence. 20 pence, man. That's like... That's less than 50 cents. For a game I've never seen before. Space Invaders Invasion Day. Never even heard of it before, but there was a Space Invaders game on the PS2 I never knew. And it looks like a, um... Maybe like a gritty reboot of the Space Invaders franchise? Looks interesting. I'll definitely sit down and give this one a go. See how it is. Taito released good games though, so maybe it's really good. Also for 99 pence, we have USA Racer. This looks interesting. I do dig games where like you're racing through a country to an objective, because I think that's a really cool idea. I dig shows like The Amazing Race and stuff like that. It'll be fun to sit down and play. This is one that I thought I would have to get on the Nintendo 64. It's actually been on my watch list on eBay for a little bit. I've just been waiting to find a copy super cheap, and it doesn't go much cheaper than 99 pence. Another Midas game, Operation Winback. A lot of people on the N64 say this is the N64's version of um, like Metal Gear Solid, and they made a PlayStation 2 port with like updated graphics, so I mean, pretty cool, pretty cool to see. This one was in great condition. 99 pence, why not? Also a sort of stealth game for... Do I want to pick that up? Eh, I guess I'd better. Pick this up too. I have to make sure this doesn't have like a um like a timer thing on it. Okay, there's a lot of space though. It actually has on this phone how much memory I've used doing a video and how much I have left to use, which is really cool. But back to video games. Mission Impossible Operation Surma. 99 pence, why not? It's like less than two Australian dollars. Like two Australian dollars is usually my limit for taking a punt on a game. So I thought for two bucks, 99 pence, why not? Looks good. I mean, Mission Impossible, great movie series. Maybe it translated into a video game pretty well. I bought a lot of movies over there as well, and a lot of the places there have like three for a pound on movies, and I was seeing a lot of movies I wanted to watch. You know, like, the end of the trip, I just gave all the movies to the missus so she could keep. But this was part of a three-for-one pound deal in an op shop. This was Ice Age 2 The Meltdown. It was like 30 pence or something, give me a break. Maybe it's fun, maybe it's fun. Oh no. These were all gotten, or all bought in a video game store. I'll go through these pretty quickly. I'll try and go through a lot of these quickly because I know I'm making a long video here. Let me pat it out a bit. We have Conan for £3.50. Looks really crummy. I'm sure I'll love it. Seven Samurai 20XX. This is what I've been looking for for years. I found it for five pounds. Great price. It's like a cool action game. I, like the Seven Samurai movie is like one of my favorite movies ever. And I love the Magnificent Seven or whatever. Also a great movie. And that's directly based on it. Possibly the worst game I've ever played, Fight Box. I thought this would be fun. It says create your own fighter and fight in like an arena. I thought this would be like Robot Wars. Sucks. If you see it for one pound and 45 pence, I tell you, avoid it. I regret buying it, I do. Uh, Power Drone. Haven't tried it out yet. Looks good. I dig racing games that aren't just like simulations. I like arcade kind of racing games. Like this one. RC Revenge Pro. Unfortunately, this one sucks. Micro Machines, it is not, but I did buy this one because it had an interesting label. 
compared to most other PlayStation 2 games, this sticks out. And so I bought it because of that. And you know, I'm not... Oh, I'm bust over 95 pence. And 95 pence for Legend of the Dragon. Fighting game on the PlayStation 2. 3D fighting game. No manual, but it's in good condition. I remember this was a show as well, like a cartoon show. Alright. Oh god. I stand for this one. This is like the national anthem of retro game pickups. I have to stand for it, fellas. Finish your beer up before you start singing. Hand on the heart. Start grabbing them. Brave the Search of Spirit Dancer. These are all from Computer Exchange. Just various stores and various locations. One pound. It was a double. I didn't realize it. Anybody wants that one, let me know. Don't want anything for it, just pay shipping. It's a good game. Knight Rider 2 the game. Two pounds. Not a bad game. Actually really fun. I like Knight Rider. It's a fun, it's a fun show. Time Split is Future Perfect. Another one I've been looking for for years. Never seen a copy of it. Don't know why. But for five pounds, gotta take a chance. It's a good game. Really good game. I've tried it out already. So fun. The Time Splitters games are like top tier shooters for the PlayStation. Interesting one here. Carmen San Diego, The Secret of the Stolen Drums. One pound fifty. Thought it might be interesting to try out. I'm not sure if this is similar to the original Carmen San Diego, where it's like a um educational game, but it still looks interesting. Getting the beer burps here. I'll try it out. Soul Reaver 2 for £2.50. Another game I've been looking for for years. Just found it in a computer exchange. £2.50, this is a great game. I played Soul Reaver, I played Legacy of Cain. This is the only one I haven't sat down and played yet. Fantastic game. But for £2.50, then. Another one I've been looking for for years. This was a trend. I've been looking for a lot of these games for years and I just found them. I was on a holiday, I was looking around and I just found them. And they were super cheap. This was 50 pence, one Australian dollar, for Dark Wind for the game track. For anyone who doesn't know, the game track was like the Wii before the Wii on the PlayStation 2. And this was one of the two games released for it. There are two games, there's this, and there's Real World Golf. Not complete, couldn't care less for 50 pence, man. That's so cool. I'll definitely sit down and try this out. I'll bust the game track out for that one for sure. If I can find it. I think it's still in storage at the parents' place. I was supposed to clear the place out, sorry. Uh, Pipe Mania, 50 pence. Pipe Mania was a fun puzzle game back in the day. I remember this one. This is a good game. Land Pipe in video game form. Always fun. One pound. Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. Crazy good game. I remember paying, playing this when I was a kid. I've been looking for it forever. Just never found it for a price I was wanting to pay. Some places put like stuff on the stickers, which is weird. I don't know why they do that. Yeah, one pound? It's like, why not, man? It's a good 3D platformer, slash beat em up. For 50 pence, Tom Clancy Splinter Cell. I traveled light so I could get games like this. I fit everything in two bags with like, um, with like five kilos to spare, so I was all good. That's one thing I was worrying about coming back. I was thinking, will I have enough, like, weight so that they won't charge me? And they didn't, so I was happy. They didn't even scan, they didn't even scan me on my way out of the Australian airport. Honest, honest to God, they looked at my left foot. He looked at my right foot, and let me on my way. So, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, I didn't have this. Weirdly enough, it's like, 
there's weird games out there that you think you have, but you don't. So check your collections and make sure you have games like Splinter Cell. This is a crazy good game. Excellent stealth game. What I had, but I traded away eight pounds for Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. Fifteen bucks. Can't beat that. It's over twenty dollars here, so eight pounds for a good condition copy was a good price. This isn't. I hear this is a pretty bad game, but it's still one that I wanted to get back into the collection. Before anyone asks, no, I'm not going for a complete. I'm not going for a complete PlayStation Two collection. I'm just buying games that interest me that I want to play. Eight pounds for this. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Tag Force Evolution. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! games. I played one of the Game Boy Advance like more than any other game when I was a kid. It was another Yu-Gi-Oh! GX game. I think it was Duel Academy. Such a crazy good game. If you're into the card games, definitely check them out. Complete and in great condition. Eight pounds. This is like thirty bucks over here. So for fifteen dollars, pretty good. Six pounds for this one. Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Coliseum. I've not played this one. It looks interesting. It's not based on the card game. It's based on like a um like a board game. So it might be interesting to sit down and play. Here we go. Complete and in great condition. I tell you something, these Brits, these Pommies take care of a lot of their games, I have to give them that. A couple of the games got crushed in uh, transport, but that's okay, I have spare cases for days. Uh, Global Defense Force, five pounds, man. This is one I've been looking for since I started buying for the PlayStation 2. I finally have it. Played a bit multiplayer with the misses, but the uh, frame rate was terrible on this. Awful in multiplayer. Damn near unplayable. Like you can't really see what you're doing. The flame, the frame, flame, the frame rate is that terrible. But complete in great condition for five pounds. Another one I've been looking for for years. SOS: The Final Escape, six pounds. This is based on the. I think they're just called SOS. They are games in Japan where you have to. Like avoid natural disasters, or you're in a natural disaster and you have to get out of it, and you have to help save people who are also in them. There was one set to come out fairly recently, but there was a... There was a tsunami in Japan, and they cancelled the game based on that, which sucks, because it would have been great to get another one, like a modern one. There's one on the um, Nintendo Wii as well, called Disaster Days of Something. Yeah, it'll be great to sit down and play that one out. It looks like a great game. Mrs. I've been drinking a bit more than just this one beer, trust me. The Mrs. found this one. Where is Orochi 2? Three pounds. Like five bucks. Eat your heart out, John Carter. Completely in good condition. Manual feels weird, actually. Manual is like crump. That's weird. I don't find a lot of games where the manual is like crumpled in various sections. I guess whoever had this read it a lot, something like that. Or maybe they spilt a soda on it, a soda on it and decided to try and fix it. Yeah, three pounds, why not? One pound for Lago Winch. Another game I've been looking for for years, just never found a copy. Definitely one I wanted to try out. It's a it's a game that I have to put back in its holder. It's an interesting game. It's supposed to be very, not very good, but just very wacky and interesting. Smash Cars for 50 pence. Why not? I love Demolition Derby games. Well, this is a um, RC racing kind of game, so yeah, should also be interesting. Ah, it's not deep. That sucks. Uh, this was a double. Shadow of the Colossus. Um, this was actually, I swapped the cases out on these. This cost me 22 pounds. Unfortunate because that's about, that's about, maybe I should sit down. That's about 40 bucks, that's about what it goes for over here. Turns out I already had a copy and these are like exactly the same. They're both 
the PAL copy is European, so they are exactly the same. That sucks. I'll keep the better condition copy and throw up the other one on eBay, see if I can maybe make my money back on it, but... Yeah, a little bit annoying. I think the, um... Yeah, the disc on that is near perfect, but I don't know how much Shadow of the Colossus is worth now the uh, PS4 version is out. Probably not as much as I paid. But I think that's the only one I paid, like, overpaid for. Well, except for that one. Uh, Ico, 12 pounds. 12 pounds for Ico, I... This was the game I finished on the PlayStation 2 before I left. Like, I finished this a couple of days before I left. So, to get a PlayStation 2 copy, the original one, for £12, why not, man? Great game. The, uh, artwork is based on Nostalgia of the Infinite by... I don't remember the name of the artist. It sucks. But it's good artwork. Way better than the US one. Um, actually, let's show that a bit. The American artwork is way worse. A uh, glass rose for £25? A bit expensive. A bit more than it goes for, unfortunately. But this was a game that I really, really wanted in my collection. I really want to get the um, games released by Capcom before Resident Evil 4 came out, because they were struggling leading up to Resident Evil 4, so it's interesting just to see these kind of games they were putting out. It's supposed to be a very interesting game. It's supposed to be, um, a bit like Shadow of Memories, I think. Where you can control time a little bit, but I might be talking out of my butt on that one. Complete, like, for the price, I could not ask for it to be in better condition. But definitely one I have to sit down and play. It's just like, a lot of people don't talk about this game, and it's supposed to be insanely good. Here we go, beautiful Joe. From one end of, this, end of the spectrum to another. This was originally released on the GameCube, released on the PlayStation 2 now if, um, with an extra character. You can play as Dante from Devil May Cry in this. No manual, but for three pounds, I don't really care. This is a fantastic game. Three pounds is a great deal. That's like less than six Australian dollars. Tyler Tasmanian Tiger for three pounds. You'd think I'd find this game in Australia, because it's, it's an Australian game, but no. No manual there, but for three pounds, great condition. A lot of them got a little bit of damage just on um, that part you see like there. I think they were pressed down together against each other, but um, it is annoying because it translates to damage on the um, actual artwork itself, but that's okay. That's okay, as long as the disc isn't destroyed. That's all I care about. I like to be able to play the game. Uh, Savage Skies, one pound. Interesting looking game. It's, um... <laughs> it's supposed to be a game where you control a dragon. The only other game I play like that is Dragon Rage on the PlayStation 2. It's not very good. Hoping this one is better. Liberia 2, actually a technical double for me. I did not realize that I already had it on the original Xbox, so I will be selling my Xbox version to keep the PlayStation 2 version. Anyone wants that, let me know. You can have it for 10 bucks. Shit. Well, for three pounds, good price. I've not played the Siberia game, it's supposed to be good. I think they're a little bit like, um... They're not like... They're a bit like Mist, but you can actually control the character in the third person. Puyo Pop Fever. pound fifty. why not? Puyo Pop games are great. They are so much fun to just sit down and play. Definitely recommend them. I need to go use the bathroom. Okay, let's get through this. Pretty close to the end. Devil... A lot of these came loose, unfortunately, during transit. This one is very scratched. But I still wanted it for the price. 
that have never seen this game before. Devil Kings. I will explore my options in getting this resurfaced, I think. I'm pretty sure there are places that do resurfacing. A few computer exchange stores probably do it. Or just give them a couple of bucks or something for it. This is interesting. This is um, Capcom's take on Dynasty Warriors, which is very cool. In 2005, it was worth getting for five pounds. For two pounds, we Woodpecker. Another one I've been looking for for a long time. I hear it's a very good 3D platformer for the PlayStation 2. Released in 2000, so very early on. Definitely one I wanted to get. <laughs> a game based on Lego for kids? For 50 pence, hype for time quest. Why not? It looked interesting. Yeah, this is based on... Let me try this. This is based on Playmobil, or Playmobil. You know, there's like, um, they make like, big Lego pieces for kids. It's a bit odd, but I wanted to give it a try for 50 pence. One that I've never seen. This was one of the first games I bought. It is Ring of Red. Very cool to get another copy of this. Really good strategy game. I love strategy games that are based in like a... Uh, like modern time kind of tactics, I guess, or with modern machinery. Like you're fighting with like tanks and stuff. And I do have like mechs in this game as well, which is cool. A little bit. Didn't have a manual, but for six pounds was not going to complain. I traded my last copy of this away. Very happy to get it back. We were putting these on a lot of things while we were over. Googly eyes. Yeah, they can just lie there. Care of the Kangaroo, round two. Mrs. had this as a kid. It's good to get for two pounds. It's... Care of the Kangaroo is one I've not played. I've not played the first or the second, so it's going to be interesting sitting down and giving these a go. Bloody hell, thick manual on that one. Two pounds, why not? This, this is very heavy. Finally, for the PlayStation 2 games, Dynasty Tactics. 75 pence for another strategy game based in the Dynasty Warriors universe. It's supposed to be really good. You can create your own Three Kingdom Saga, which is like the Three Kingdom Saga is what all Dynasty Warriors is based on. So, to create your own is a really cool thing. Definitely gonna sit that one. Definitely gonna sit that one down. We need to talk Dynasty Tactics. No, I'm going to sit down and play that one, so... Computer Exchange got a lot out of me. And I was happy to give them my money. That's what you work hard and save up for, people, so that you can do stuff like that. If I was doing crazy purchases like these every week, or every three weeks as it's been, I'd probably go broke, but... As it was, it was nice. And that's what you do when you're on holiday, you spend money. You spend money, you help to support the place that you're visiting. And I have a few more things to show. A bit of PlayStation 1 goodies. Um, yeah, that is about it actually. I didn't buy any uh, cartridge based stuff. So that I collect it anymore. This was given to me by my girlfriend for my birthday. She thought I'd like it and I really do. Brand new and sealed. We have a sort of Camelot, a Midas game. It's just cool to get a brand new PlayStation 1 game. Unfortunately, in transit, the case cracked. Ah, oh, what can you do? Like if someone's gonna comment, you should have wrapped all of these in bubble wrap or something. I was not gonna do that. There's too many. That's okay. I can't really change out the case because it's brand new, but whatever. It's a lovely gift. This was from the stain. From the stain? From the same game shop that I bought all those PlayStation 2 games at. For £9.95, I bought the Help Charity Compilation. Which is a game that I've been looking for for years. It has three games on it, Broken Sword, Road Rash, and Mist. 
actually don't have Broken Sword or Mist on the PlayStation 2, so this is how I'm going to play them. And for £10 for these three games, great price. Cool story behind this as well. Game to, well the game publishes for this, uh, for this particular charity thing. Put all of the uh, proceeds towards charity, which is nice. These were like new to buy games at the time. This was from 1996. Broken Sword, I'm pretty sure, was a new game on the PlayStation 1. So it's very nice that they did that. It's in a nice case. This one I think I paid like £10 for, something like that, so about 20 bucks. We have. I think I bought this at like one of the markets that I visited. We've visited a lot of like markets that had a lot of fresh produce and stuff and bought fresh produce for the day. Like, we would go out and buy, um, like, stuff to make sandwiches with and stuff. But I bought Judge Dredd. There's a guy that had a lot of video games. Unfortunately, his stuff was very, like, mix, mix and match. It was very, uh, hard to look through stuff. And so, I didn't put, like, a big pile together. And he didn't have prices on, on anything, which I hate. I hate where you have to ask someone what they want for something. So it's like... It didn't say any price in the world. I could have hold, held this up and it would have said £50. I got this for £10. Judge Dredd on the PlayStation 1. Looks interesting. It looks very interesting. I don't know if it's a good game. I don't really know what kind of game it is, but it looks interesting. For £10, I thought I'd take a punt on it. How many cash converters? I only bought two things from cash converters there just because they didn't have a whole lot of stores. But the rest of these were from like cash converters. We have uh, Monkey Hero on the PlayStation 1, £3. This is one I've been looking for for a while. This is another dungeon crawler. Definitely check this one out. It's pretty cheap. I think you can get it for around £10 shipped. Or like 15 to 20 bucks shipped maybe in Australia. I don't know. Or maybe this was a really good deal. I don't know. But this is a really good game, Monkey Hero. Based on Journey to the West. Uh, one pound for this. Boston Route 2 Arcade Edition. Good game. Really good game. And one that I bought to sell on for... 99 pence. Time Crisis. I was going to take this into the uh, computer exchange. They only give like 30 pence for it. I can definitely sell it for more over here. And for £2.99, unfortunately this one cracked while I was in transit, but ECW Hardcore Revolution. Why am I standing back? Here we go. ECW Hardcore Revolution. This is a terrible game, but definitely one I wanted to grab. And I wasn't actually sure if I had this, so if I do already have this, I can easily get my money back by selling it on. There we go. At the very least, like them to be smooth to look to glance over. I don't like when I get cracks in games, but that's what you get with international travel. They don't handle your stuff well. But yeah, three pounds for that. Good deal. Okay. That's all for the stuff I got in the UK. Once again, I had an amazing time. It's been the love of my life. It was absolutely incredible. I'd go over again in a heartbeat if I didn't have, um, if I didn't have the old work responsibilities. What can you do? Responsibilities, right? I, <laughs> I govern a five-person team at my store. Nothing much I can do about that. Without me there, the place goes to shit. And I've been back in to have a look, the place has gone to shit. A lot of work ahead of me, that's for sure. Probably won't get another game hunting video out for a little while, but... I did, because I'm still technically on holidays for the next few days. I got back on like, Friday I think, so I've been taking the um... I've been taking a few days to rest and a few days to actually go out and do some game hunting over here. And I went to the local markets and I found... First up, this for 10 bucks we have Rygar, the Legendary Adventure. Good game on the PlayStation 2. Another game I've been looking for for years. 
gonna be the theme of this episode. Games I've been after. Great condition. Couldn't ask for a better condition copy for the price I paid. Ten bucks. Happy to pay it. It's supposed to be a bit like God of War. The kind of hack and slash game. It's supposed to be really good. I played it for about like half an hour, created a save. It seems like a really good game. I'm going through like um old dungeons and caverns and stuff. Yeah, this was probably, other than that other CDI game, I found two CDI games. One was gifted to me, one I found out in the wild. I never find CDI games in the wild. This is the very first one. I found a CDI movie in the wild before, I've never found a game. So for the Philips CDI from the market, I paid a dollar. I got in at 6am, walked there, felt great. I paid a dollar for this. Defender of the Crown. All the other video games had already been snagged up by people looking for them before the place opened. They passed right over this. Slipped through the cracks. Defender of the Crown for the Philips CDI and this is in perfect condition. I could not ask for this to be in better condition. Even the disc is like, usually when you get CDI games they have like some wear. This one is completely perfect. There's some finger smudges on it, that's it. No scratches. Considering how old this disc is, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have this one. So it's good to get. Always after CDI games, but it it's just something you don't see over here. I was hoping maybe to see a little bit of it in the UK, maybe in some retro game stores. Didn't see them there either, which is unfortunate. But it's cool to get. And the last two things here, I stopped off in a cash converters on the way over to my dad's. I had to help him pick up a TV unit. But I had buy one get one free on all PlayStation 3 or most of the gaming stuff anyway. So I bought these two games for a total of seven bucks. We have Sonic and Sega All Star Racing. The one I did not have, I don't believe. If I do, I can easily sell it for double what I paid for both of these. And Minecraft the story mode, which I don't think I have and I'm not sure if I really want to keep. So I think you can, um, like there are like big YouTube people on this, like I think PewDiePie is in this game. It's interesting, at the very least. It's supposed to come with a leaflet so that you can download all of the rest of the episodes because this was released episodically. So I I think the only thing I have on this is the first episode. Oh well, still one for the collection. The Telltale games, after I played A Wolf Among Us, I knew I was never going to beat that, so I stopped playing them. And yeah, whew. that's it fellas. A lot of games around, a lot of stuff I bought. This is going to take a while to upload, so I'll... Talk to you guys when I talk to you. I have been watching YouTube videos, but I haven't been commenting for the last few weeks. That's because I only started watching them again when I got back. When I was over there, I was spending time with the missus enjoying my holiday. It was less about being on the internet and more about being out and enjoying myself. So that was nice. Lovely holiday. Can't wait to go again. This is Seeing My House. Be you guys farewell. I hope you guys stay safe. Have a good one. And yeah, that's about it. It's good to be back. Talk to you guys later. I'll see if I can get back to commenting as well. I haven't commented on many videos. And that's all, folks.